Today's Mother's Day. We want to give them a break. Because I think all of our children's church workers work during the Empowerment Conference this year. And so with that said, we're going to go right into this thing today. All right. Let's, uh, let's go to uh, Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15. chapter 15. As we open up this morning, we are going to the next level. Somebody say the next level. The next level. The next level. This is not a cliche statement authored by run-of-the-mill motivational speeches, but it goes so much deeper. The next level is an abandonment of past struggles that held you down and it's a huge leap into a fresh and greater way of living by adhering to God's word when it says to focus on whatsoever things are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, of good report, have virtue, meaning power, and are praiseworthy. The Bible says to think on these things. And we need to think on these things every day as we soar higher and higher, as straight up we climb into the kingdom lifestyle and mindset that our God is willed for us to walk in. It's a place called greater. It's a place called the next level. Who wants to go? Yeah. Does anybody want to go to the next level? Yeah. I got about 10 people that want to go. Can I give you a shout point already this morning? Give me shout point number one this morning. Watch this. God's next is always better than your last. Now come on, that's so good right there. God's next is always better than your last. I don't care how good your last was. God's next is always better. Amen? I serve a God who's all about the next. While we're in our now, and while we're being trained and prepared and stewarded in our now, God's already got your next work out. Amen? And God wants you to always fixate your eyes and your mind and your heart and your plan on what your next move is. Amen? I'm not talking about being anxious. You need to enjoy. Remember at the conference we talked about enjoying where you are and appreciating where you are. But there's nothing wrong with always looking ahead too. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. And being tenacious after going after what is ahead. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. So God's next is always better than your last. Now where we are in this portion of Scripture, where we are in Matthew 15, when we begin reading, we'll be in verse 22. As we honor our mothers today, I thought it fitting to first look at the persistence of this mother that approached Jesus and his disciples here in our opening text. I had to, to preach about a mama in the Bible this morning. Amen. Now I've got some other examples I'm going to use, but I'm going to start off with preaching about a mama. Is that all right, mamas? Amen. Verse 22, it says, And behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region and cried out to him being Jesus, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she cries out after us. But he answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And she said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Amen. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. Will you give the Lord just a few moments this morning to impact your mind, change your heart, and electrify your soul? Does anybody want to receive a word from God this morning? Come on, somebody. Come on. Amen. Father, we praise you this morning. We thank you for this time you've anointed and appointed. God, we give you honor and glory. Help this message help people this morning. In your name we declare and pray. Somebody say amen. amen. This 2019 Mother's Day, 
Next level message is called when to push. Somebody say when to push. Over 15 and a half years ago, my wife and I became parents for the second time. <clears throat> Man, Amen. our children are almost 10 years apart. We have a story and a testimony about that. But when we had the blessing of having a second child, I was so excited. I remember telling our oldest son on Super Bowl Sunday that he was going to have a little brother. Uh, or I don't think we knew that it was a boy yet, so no, we did tell him that Tiffany was having a baby. And I remember him being so excited about that. And we went through all the steps. We went to Lamar's class and we did all that. There was so much anticipation about the birth of this child. And we were so young when our first son was born. This time we were doing things the right way and in the right order. And I remember that they told us what the due date was. And Tiffany, you can correct me after church if I can hear this wrong. <laughs> but we decided to induce. And that is the way to go for me because I was able to plan everything. And I knew that you, know, you didn't need to be out of town around that date. You needed to be close by. Uh, and actually, we were able to schedule it and say, okay, on this date, I think it's on his actual birthday, September 25th. We said, we're going to go to the hospital and we're going to have a baby on this day. And I remember that morning, Pastor Jerry was there. I think he probably got there before we did. Uh, and he was there to pray and then he got out of there. And I've always followed his example with that. I don't stay for that stuff. I come in and pray and I get out. I don't want to hear uh, what goes on. I don't want to, you know, uh, I'm out of there. And then he prayed. And she was induced between 6 and 7 a.m. By 11 a.m., uh, the, the hour of 11 a.m., we were having a baby. And we already knew he was going to be a boy by that time. And we knew that his name was going to be Jackson. And I remember that the doctor came in and said, it's not time to push yet. But later on, he came in and said, it is time to push. You see, he knew by certain signs and signals when it was going to be that she needed to push. She couldn't push before it was time. And she pushed one time and man, she really, really showed some pain in that. She pushed a second time and it was agonizing to watch and it was really tough. When she pushed that third time, it was really, really hard. But in that, she just pushed for a long time, and all of a sudden, I heard a baby crying. Yes. On that third push, me and Mima were in the room. And I think Abigail was there, too. She was the nurse. And we were in there, and all of a sudden, we had baby Jackson. And we held him up like the Lion King, like little Simba. Hey, Amen. <laughs> Be hugged. <laughs> There's another Parker to carry on. The legacy of the Parkers. A single cross. Amen. And Tiffany went from excruciating, violent pain to absolute joy and relief and ecstasy and tears saying, Jackson, Jackson, Jackson. Amen. Isn't it something how something that hurts so bad can be so incredible? Amen. Amen. You see, she had to be told when to push. And when she pushed at the right time, she got a blessing yes. that has blessed our life for 15 and a half years and continues to bless our life every single day. Amen? So we decided to have an inducement or for her to be induced. Meaning, inducing is intentionally causing something to birth whether it's ready to come out or not. In other words, inducing has to be administered because that which needs to come out should have by now. We made a decision that the doctor said this baby should be born by September 25th. This baby shall be born by September 25th. That's the day we're going to push. That's the day we're going to break through. That's the amount of time that we're putting on this thing and we're going to induce because... 
this blessing should be here by now. Now, some ladies, they wait, and if they're not had their child by their due date, and it goes a, a couple of more days or maybe even another week, they'll go in and induce then. Why do they induce? Because what should have been born by now, what should have been birthed by now, they have had to make it come out. Amen? Some things don't always give birth easily. Some things don't always come out easily and slowly. Sometimes you've got to do some things to move things along. Amen? I serve a God that says, will you allow this thing to be birthed? Will you allow this to be birthed in your life? Are you willing to push? Somebody shout push. 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 Give me shout point number two. You can't always sit back and wait for something to happen when God has given you the vision for it. You can't always sit back and say, I'm waiting on the Lord. <laughs> Maybe God is waiting on you. God is giving you a vision for what is to take place in your life. And many times in Christianity, Pastor Jerry, we sit back and we think it's going to fall right in our lap. Well, things sometimes do fall right in our lap, but there are some things that God has destined for you to walk in. And if you're not walking in it by now, my God help me, if you're not walking in it by now, God says it's time for you to push. It's time for you to push. Can I translate that another way? Many times we get in a worship service and we say, I'm not going to lift my hands unless the Holy Ghost lifts my hands. Well, they're your hands. They're not the Holy Ghost's hands. They're your hands that you're responsible for lifting up. I'm not going to shout unless God gives me a shout. That's your voice. God gave you a voice to shout back at him. I'm not going to give a tongue unless God gives me a tongue. That's your tongue. And God expects you to move it. Oh, help me, Jesus. I'm not going to do nothing until the boy. I'm, I'm about to get some religion right now. I'm about to push. I'm about to push. Watch this. I'm not going to do Listen. I'm not going to move my feet. I'm not going to lift my hands. I'm not going to lift my voice or move my tongue unless the power of God falls on me. Guess what? I don't have to wait for the power of God to fall on me because the power of God is already in me. And Paul said, stir up the gift that is in you. Now the power of God can come in the room. But when the power of God comes in the room, it ought to make contact with the power that's already in you. My God, if you're a Christian and your name's been written down in the Lamb's Book of Life and you're saved and you're on your way to heaven, the Bible says you have the Holy Spirit in you. And when He comes, He comes in spirit and in power. The power of God is in you to stir up. You don't have to keep waiting for God to make a move on you. God's waiting for you to make a move towards Him. Oh, somebody ought to give Him a hand clap of praise right now. That has become an excuse. That's become an excuse to why we won't push. And there are going to be things that you are supposed to have by now. There are things that you're supposed to be walking in by now. But you don't have them, nor are you walking in them, because you have failed to push. Well, why does he make it so hard? He doesn't. He just wants to know, do you want it or not? The kingdom is like a treasure hidden in the field. Why is it hidden? So random passerbys can't get the blessings of God. Amen. God's got some things tucked away for those who will diligently seek Him. The hidden things of God. Amen. You don't just get to come by and grab that. No, 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 no. It's hidden. You got to seek the Lord in this thing. Amen. Some people are excited about this. this Can I look at my scripture? If we look back, we're talking about when to push. Somebody say when to push. It says in verse 22, a woman of Canaan, she's been called a Seraphonician woman. But she comes, either way, she's not a Jew. She's a Gentile. A Gentile is a non-Jew, right? 
And in that culture at that time, there was racism. Right? That's right. There was racism. And even the Jews that were set aside for God had hateful hearts towards Gentiles. Yes. They should not have been that way. God did not teach them to be that way. Right? That's right. You're not born with racism. Racism is taught to you. Right. It is taught to you. And so with that said, this woman finds Jesus. And look at what she says. She's not a Jew that's been trained up in the Levitical laws or in the Old Testament. But she says, oh Lord, son of David. Yes. She deeply recognizes his identity as an Old Testament prophecy that says he will be in the lineage of David. Yes. So she's recognizing him not as just a teacher, not as just a great prophet, but she's recognizing him as the Messiah. Amen? It's bad when somebody that don't go to church has a relationship with God that people who are in the church hearing the word don't have. Come on, help me out somebody. She's not heard the teachings that the Pharisees were dishing out. I don't know that their teachings would have helped her anyway. Because all they were about a bunch of made up rules that they had added. But she says, Lord, son of David, my daughter is severely demon possessed. A lot of times when you see that or somebody says that to this day, we want to analyze it. We want to figure it out. Is this really what's going on here? And no, not everything's the devil. I get that. But a lot of things are that people aren't addressing. Can I tell you that? There's a lot of people in straight jackets right now. But if a preacher was just to walk up to them and say, devil, come out, they wouldn't be wearing their straight jackets no more. But that's kooky and weird. There's a lot of people that are on 15 different medications that they keep trying and trying and trying. When all somebody needs is to be filled with the Holy Ghost and say, come out, devil. Did things change from then till now? No. No, the things that Jesus dealt with then, we're still dealing with now. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me get back to this. So, she comes to him and asks him for something, but he didn't answer her. He gave her not a word. A lot of people look at that and say, was Jesus being rude to her? No, he was testing her. He was testing her and he was testing his disciples, his disciples at the same time. What do I mean by that? He wanted to see if she was willing to push. And he wanted to test their hearts to see if they were willing to show compassion to everybody. Not just some people. Jesus is doing two things at one time here. His disciples say, send her away. She's bothering us. And then he looks at her and says, I was only sent to the house of Israel. Now you say, why does he say that? The gospel was to be given to Israel, then they were to broadcast it to the world. They started the churches, right? They wrote the epistles, the letters in the New Testament. It started with them, but it, it was for Jews and Gentiles alike, right? Okay, and so with that said, then a lot of people would have said, Oh, you have a rule. You have a policy. I'll just leave you alone. The store is closed. The helper can't help me. His policy does not allow him to help me. That's when a lot of people stop. A lot of people stop at the threshold of no. A lot of people stop at the door that says not now. A lot of people stop at the doorway that says we're closed. But this woman, watch what she does now. I'm talking about when to push. Jesus says, I've come for the house of Israel, right? Then it says, what does she do? What is her reaction to that? Is it offense? Most folks would have been able to say, would have said, who do you think you are? They'd have lost their honor and their respect right then for him. You're not giving me what I asked for. You're healing everybody. Why won't you help my daughter? And that's where a lot of people would stop. Is that offense? But Jesus wants to know, will you still push through your offense? Will you still push through your hurt feelings? Will you still push through the fact that you are kicked off and still push through to get the blessing that you know you're supposed to have? There's a lot of people walking in less than 
right now, but you know in your heart, I'm supposed to be further along than this right now. You're, listen, you might be broke right now, but your little mind don't know it yet. I'm supposed to be walking in blessings. I'm like, my body might be sick right now, but my mind and my spirit don't know that I'm healed and made whole. You've got to, oh, let your spirit override what your body feels. You've got to override those things and know this is where I'm supposed to be. Oh, I've got to push. I'm pushing through this. I've been in this valley too long. I've been in this struggle too long. Did she get offended? Did she get mad? Verse 25 says she worshiped him. Can you worship after being told no? Can you worship after being told not right now? Can you worship after being told you are an annoyance? Can you worship after you get offended? No, most people can't do that. Care how holy they are. They get mad, they're done. Right? They get offended, they're done. But what did she do? She worshiped and said, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. A lot of times we think we've got to cry these big, exaggerated theological prayers, Sister Gladys, when a lot of times our prayer just needs to sound like this. Help me! Help me, Jesus! This can't go on much longer. I've been in this thing too long now. I've been stressed out about this too long now. I can't stand this no more, Jesus. I, nothing else has worked. I need you to work, Lord God, in this thing. Well, somebody shut up. Help. 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 My God. Watch. Then he answered. Does he give her what he want? she wants here? No. Nope. He answered and said, it's not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. Come on, you got a problem with that, you know. <laughs> you have got an issue with that. And you know you do. In that culture was racism. Jews would look down at Gentiles as being less than them. And they would refer to them as pagan dogs. Because they didn't know Jehovah. They didn't know the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, right? So that culture was put on the Pharisees. And the Pharisees taught that. They acted like Everybody was acting like that. And so Jesus was just relaying what everybody thought. Jesus was relaying how everybody felt. Jesus was representing the culture at that time, but he was about to change the culture. He was calling out the hypocrisy and the hatefulness of that culture at that time. But at the same time, at the same exact time, he's allowing this woman to push and not give up to show that I will do whatever I got to do to get a blessing today. What does he say? He says what? He said, it's not going to take a children's bed and throw it to the little dogs. And she says, yes, Lord. Call him Lord again. Yes. Every single time she addressed him, she confessed him as Lord. She confessed him as Lord. Every single time. Yes, Lord. Yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Ha! Jesus answered and said to her, O oh, woman, great is your faith. When you're willing to push, Jesus looks at your life and says, Great is your faith. Lord, let it be to you as you desire. Amen? Come on, somebody. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. Can I go ahead and tell you something? The daughter was not with her. The daughter was back at the house, probably locked up in a room to keep her from hurting herself, to keep her from running away, to keep her from hurting anybody else. But that girl was healed in that very moment when her mother kept on pushing, even though she got told not now, even though she got told you're aggravating. She kept on pushing. Even when she was referred to as a little annoying dog, she said, yes, but even the dogs can get a blessing from the master's table. Amen. Come on, I'm here to tell you, his crumbs are more than enough to heal your family. His crumbs are more than enough to restore your bank account. His crumbs are more than enough to make your body whole again. His crumbs are more than enough Come on, to light this church on fire today. Somebody say, give me some crumbs, God. His crumbs are enough. Amen. What was going on here? 
the heart of a mother's cry. And the heart of a mother's cry is this. I don't care what anyone says or thinks as long as I get a breakthrough for my child. I believe I'm in the presence today of some mamas who don't care what nobody says, who don't care what nobody thinks. They'll do what they got to do to get help for their child. Whether, come on somebody, whether your child is struggling in a subject and it's about to walk and they need a tutor. Whether the teacher didn't act right and they need to go down there and find out what in the world's going on. Help me somebody. Whether their child is strung out on drugs and everybody else would have given up on them, but no, they'll get up in the middle of the night and take them to rehab. They'll get up in the middle of the night and pick them up at a gas station, even if they don't know where in the world they're at. I'm talking to some mamas today that don't care what it sounds like. Come on, somebody. Oh, God, my God. The very things that I used to get so mad at my mama for back then, I thank you for it now, mama. I thank you for busting up in the dope house when I woke up at 18 and saying, you're coming out of here with me. And I was so embarrassed. I was so embarrassed. My buddy said, baby, come on, bust up in here. And, I, and, it, and it hurt my feelings and embarrassed me at that time. But my God, in a couple of years when they were locked up and I won't, I thank my mama right now. Watch this. Another woman who, who approached Jesus showed she too knew when to push. Look at your neighbor and say it's time to push. It says in verse 43, now a woman having a flow of blood for 12 years. I said a flow of blood for 12 years. Not 12 days. Not 12 weeks. Not 12 months. 12 years. Amen who had spent all her livelihood on physicians and could not be healed by any, came from behind and touched the border on the hem of his garment and watched his church. Immediately, her blood flow stopped. The flow of blood. Can I just stop there for a moment? Uh -huh. It says for 12 years. This is going on. Another translation says she suffered many things from physicians. Meaning they were using her as a guinea pig to see what would happen. Let's try this. You're still having a blood issue. Let's try this. Let's make you sit in this. Let's make you stand in this. Her body could have been deformed from being burned or, or, or certain things being done to her. She could have physical harm done to her body. Because of the things they tried and experimented on her. Because the Bible says in another translation, Pastor Kim, she suffered yes. many things. Yes. She had tried everything and nothing worked. Then she heard about Jesus. And all the people that were getting unbelievable supernatural breakthroughs. And all of a sudden, she started believing in her heart. If I could just, if he would just roll through here. If he would just come through here, he don't have to come to me. No, 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 no. She probably thought at first, she started dreaming about meeting him. If I could just meet him, I would go to him and I would tell him everything that was wrong. Then the next day, her faith got even stronger. Wait a minute. I've heard there's so much power in him. Maybe I just don't even need because I've been embarrassed enough with this. I have been humiliated publicly. I can't stop this flow of blood. I've been in the public marketplace before and, and, and been laughed at and scorned. In that culture, if you were bleeding like that, you were unclean just like a leper. You were not even supposed to be out in public. Amen. Amen. They would call you unclean. I've been scorned. I've been humiliated. I've been embarrassed so many times. 
maybe I can just slip through and just touch the hem of his garment and not even bother him. You see, her faith had gotten so strong in who he was and what he could do. Uh, it really wasn't about uh, what he could come and do for her. It was all about if I can just get to where he is. I heard a teaching recently that when he touches you, you're healed. But when you touch him, he fixes everything. Because listen, another translation says she was healed and made whole. She didn't just get a healing for that day and then it started up a week later again. She got made whole, man. She never had to deal with it again. Watch. It says she came up from behind him in verse 44, touched the hem of his garment, immediately her blood, her blood flow stopped. Jesus said to him, watch this, he said, who touched me? Now he already knew. But he wanted somebody to speak up. When you get made whole, you need to testify. Yeah. He said, who touched me? When everybody denied it, Peter and those women said, Lord, the multitudes throng and press you. And you say, who touched me? But Jesus, I love this right here, Brother Brian. He says, but Jesus said, wait a minute, somebody touched me. And Peter had said, wait a minute. You know, Peter, oh, he's always speaking up. He said, wait a minute, Lord, everybody's around. Anybody, any of these people could have accidentally brushed up against you or touched you. See, everybody was trying to touch you, but they were caught up in the fanfare. They, they were caught up in being fans instead of caught up in being followers. You see, followers that have confessed him as Lord and believe in their heart, amen, that God will raise him from the dead, they are not fans, they're followers. And a follower knows what the one they're following can do for their life. Amen. Jesus said, no, 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 no. Everybody else is, is, is touching me. But somebody just got something that nobody else in this crowd got. There's something about your hunger and your tenacity and your persistence and your perseverance that will make you get what nobody else will get. Because they're just not as hungry and thirsty as you are. They won't push when it gets hard. They'll get told to go home. They'll get told the store is closed. And they'll accept it. But if you'll keep on pushing, God says there's something special. I want to bless your life. Because you're willing to stop early and stay late. You're willing to press in. You're willing to push. Somebody shall push. Watch this. He says, somebody touch me. For I perceive power going out from me. Now when the woman saw that she was not hidden, she came trembling and falling down before him. She's worshiping, and she's gotten her breakthrough. See, a lot of people, once they get their need met, they're done. I'm good. I'm going to go sit in the house now. She got her need met, and she worshiped. And he wanted her to speak up. Because watch this. She got her need met. She fell down. And she declared to him in the presence of all the people. The reason she had touched him. And how she was healed immediately. See mostly everybody up until this point. When they got healed by Jesus. They come up to him. They gave him a petition and said this is what's wrong with me. And I need to be healed. This woman didn't come up to him and tell him nothing. She believed in him so deeply that all she did was touch the hem of his garment and walk away. She was immediately healed. So when she is first speaking to him for the first time, she ain't asking for nothing, Brother Steve. She's declaring what's already happened. She's talking about this is what already happened. My God, if we could believe in him so much, wouldn't it be, a, wouldn't it be awesome to say, you know what? When I got to the parking lot this morning, Pastor, Jesus said, who touched me? He already knew, but he wanted the crowd who likely knew her to know it was her. 
Because they're the same people that said you don't belong in public. You're the same person that needs to just go home, deal with this, and accept it. You've been like this for years. You don't need to be bothering this man. We've got an event going on here. A famous evangelist is here. Come on now. You don't need to be out here. You don't need to be touching anybody. Nobody don't need to be touching you. You need to go home and accept this. He wanted everybody to know who it was that touched him. And he wanted them to realize that that which they had scorned her for in the past, that which they had looked down on her for in the past, they, didn't, they couldn't do it anymore. Because she was made whole. Her life had changed. She was never going to have to deal with that ever again. Wouldn't you like with what you've been going through, what you've been suffering, wouldn't you like to never have to deal with it again? Somebody give God a hand clap of praise. That can happen for you. That can happen for you if you'll just push. If you'll just push. Amen? I'm going to give you one more. In another example. We see men with a sense of urgency that knew it was time to push. Give me Luke chapter 5. Are you still with me? Yes. Is anybody asleep? No. If so, wake him up right now. That's as polite as I can say that. I won't tell you how my daddy used to wake me up for school. But it had something to do with this. Yeah. Yeah, he didn't come out there a third time and a fourth time and a fifth. He didn't go back. Sure, come on now, let's get that and go to school. No. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> get up, boy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Guess what I learned? Get up the first time. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. I can I can preach a sermon on all that kind of stuff. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. In another example, we see men with a sense of urgency that knew it was time to push. Luke 5, 18. It says, Then behold, men brought on a bed a man who was paralyzed, whom they sought to bring in and lay before him. And when they could not find out how they might bring him in, because of the crowd, they went up on the housetop, yes. let him down with his bed through the tithing, through the roof, into the midst before Jesus. Watch this. When he saw their faith, Faith isn't just something you feel, think, believe, or hear. It's all those things. But it's also something you can see. They showed him their faith. He said to, me, he said to the man, your sins are forgiven you. Now I preached that up and down. That was his biggest issue. Not the fact that he was paralyzed. And the Pharisees had a problem with that. We know all about that, right? Because he's forgiven a man of sin that thought it was blasphemy. Jesus said to prove to you that I can do both. I can forgive sins. Grand eternal life, and I can heal bodies right now. Right. He's going to get up and walk. Watch this. Uh, let's get down to verse 24, the latter part of it. He said to the man who was paralyzed, I said, You arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. Immediately he rose up before them, took up what he had been lying on, and departed to his own house, glorifying God. I serve a God that can empower you so deeply that that which you've been laying on and relying on, you can pick it up. Instead of it carrying you, you can start carrying it. Go across your shoulder and go to the house and put it up in the closet and never have to use it again. This is when I have a picnic or something. I have something to lay on the beach with. Hallelujah. You say, why did you skip all that? Because I'm not here to talk about the Pharisees. I'm not even here to talk about the paralyzed man. I'm here to talk about his homeboys that loved him so much. His brothers that loved him so much. His buddies, his good friends that loved him so much that when he couldn't push through, they pushed through for him. It helps to surround yourself with good people. Remember, it helps to have good friends that will help you push through or that will even push for you. Who are your friends? Who are the people you're surrounding yourself with? Will they help you push when you need a breakthrough or will they walk away when you have a breakdown? My God, we need some good God and people that will really have our back and not leave us hanging high and dry just when our life starts going through a valley. My God, who am I talking to this morning? You need to know they got your back and if they don't got your back, you need to tell them goodbye. Goodbye. As I begin to try to close, am I all right? When it comes to the aspect of persistence, somebody shout persistence. Jesus himself gave an example 
of how we should keep on knocking. He's, he talked about a story of where a man had a co had company come late at night. Yeah. He didn't have enough food to feed him. Uh -huh. So he goes to his neighbor's house to see if he could get some food there. The neighbor had already laid down for the night. The wife, the kids, everybody was in bed, right? Most people are not going to get up. You knock a couple of times, you walk away saying, it's really late. You're probably asleep. I don't know when nobody up. And you go back and you tell your company, we're just going to have to start in here tonight. But he wanted to get a breakthrough for that man because that man traveled a long time. And so what did he do? He pushed. Jesus said he keeps on knocking and he keeps on knocking and he keeps on knocking and his persistence stays intact and he keeps on knocking. No matter what, he said eventually that man will open that door and he will get you what you want so you will go on somewhere. Right? What do you want? Take anything. Just get out of here. Take all my Twinkies. Take, take, take my Swiss rolls. Take my nabs. Take my, my Doritos. Take whatever you need, brother. Just get. You can have that two liter of Dr. Pepper. Just get out. Guess what? He got what he needed. He pushed. He got the breakthrough. Because he wouldn't stop knocking. Some of you have stopped knocking on the door of your destiny. And God says you need to keep right on knocking. Somebody shout, I'm going to keep knocking. When it comes to that aspect of persistence, Jesus gave an example. Also, he wants to know today who's willing to respond to the urgency he puts in your heart. There's things you should have responded to by now that you haven't. There is times when you wait and you pray and you trust in God's timing. But when Jesus asked, who do you say I am? Somebody had to answer. When Jesus was out on the water and said, and he bid somebody to come, somebody had to walk out there. Somebody's got to, to, to respond. Somebody's got to respond. He called Peter the rock that the gates of hell would not prevail against. God needs some rocks like Simon Peter who will push. So be persistent. Respond. And finally, remember this now. I don't mean no judgment. Because you know me. I don't preach bad. I don't do that. Not going to do it. Now, I'll have a righteous indignation at times. But there's some people that are getting behind pulpits today and they look like they're so mad. They're like, why did you even come? They look like they're so angry. They even have a, an angry look in their face when they preach. I serve a God of love. But watch this. My God does get frustrated. Jesus acknowledged frustration due to what should have been produced by them. He said there was a fig tree and it had leaves on it. It had the appearance of life, but no fruit. There's a lot of people today are walking around with the appearance of life. They're playing with God. Bear the fruit. Bear the fruit that it takes. People need that fruit and they need it from you. They need it from me. Jesus got frustrated with that tree and we know what he did to it, right? He gave a parable about a third man with talents. He said the first two took less and invested it and got more. The last man who was given more buried it in the ground, did nothing with it. There's a lot of people that have buried their callings in the ground and you're doing nothing with it. God says it is time to invest it. It is time to make something happen with it. But I gave it to you for a reason. I didn't give it to you to sit on. I didn't give it to you to bury it. I gave it to you to invest your time and your energy and your heart into it. And do something with it. Amen. You got to push. You got to know when to push. For several today, it's time to push. I want you to stand on your feet. You like anything out of this.